Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're dealing with a few issues that keep popping up age after age through reflection and examination of the scriptures. This time, what does the Bible say about property? The concept of property is a very biblical one, though not in the way people usually think. A proper understanding of the biblical concept of property begins with the question of who all the land really belongs to. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and all they that dwell therein. Psalm 23 or 24, 1b. Land and everything in the land is ultimately owned by God first and foremost. He distributes that land to people as he sees fit, but that's not something that God owes us. Cleansing, Cleansing the, land the land and dwelling, dwelling in it, it. for I have I given, given it you for a possession. possession. Numbers 33:53. God allows people to have land to live in as a gift from himself, and no one had more right to do this than he does. That said, once ownership has been established, Thou shalt not, not steal. steal. Exodus 20:15. The number of situations in which it's all right to take what belongs to other people are extremely small in number. So small, in fact, that if people obeyed the law of God, they wouldn't exist at all. There are countless verses in the Bible that preach generosity to the poor and speak of the importance of caring for their needs, but in spite of that, many poor people still starve. God doesn't want that to happen. Is not this rather the fast that I have chosen? Loose the bands of wickedness, undo the bundles that oppress. Let them that are broken go free, and break asunder every burden. Deal thy bread to the hungry, and bring the needy and the harborless into thy house. When thou shalt see one naked, cover him, and despise not thy own flesh. Isaiah 58, 6-7 God wants people to use their property to provide for the needs of others, because ownership of property isn't supposed to be an end unto itself. It, like everything, should be used justly. Because of this, we should understand theft to refer to a violation of the will of God, rather than just the will of the person owning the property. Ownership of property is a law of God, but it's not the only such law. And if the owner of some kinds of property is deliberately refusing to allow it to be used to provide other people with what they need to survive, for example, a very rich person who refuses to help feed poor people in their own neighborhood, the story of Lazarus and the rich man is about this, then the very choice to withhold that money from the poor should be seen as unjust. The Catechism explains this distinction very precisely. There is no theft, if consent can be presumed or if refusal is contrary to reason and the universal destination of goods. This is the case in obvious and urgent necessity when the only way to provide for immediate essential needs, food, shelter, clothing, is to put at one's disposal and use the property of others. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2408, second and third sentences. So when someone steals a loaf of bread because they need it to survive and feed their family, their action isn't stealing in the sense of being contrary to God's law. However, there's another important distinction to keep in mind. The Bible says we must be generous with our property. The Bible says we mustn't steal. Our property should be used to help supply the needs of the poor. However, it's another thing entirely when we take someone else's property or try to use the property of other people to supply what's needed for people instead of being generous with our own goods. Again, taking other people's property is stealing, even if your intentions for how to use it may be noble. It's still not okay. There's one more distinction. Although we have an obligation to the poor, the needy, and travelers, we have a more pressing obligation to our own family members. But if any man have not care of his own, and especially of those of his house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. 1 Timothy 5 8. The intention of being generous to the poor is to provide them with what they need, what it's right for them to have, and wrong for us to take from them. That doesn't mean that it's acceptable to impoverish our own families because someone else was also in need. There is a limit to the demands of generosity. So, in short, have and respect property, provide for and support your family, but also be generous to the poor so that your neighbors don't starve when you could have prevented it. Next, what does the Bible have to say about manipulation? 
That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.